So the last thing that I did was I had added the required multimedia items. I've added the required images and multimedia. There's a few optional ones. If I go back and check here, video. I'm not going to do this one. This is much too labor intensive. This one is much too much effort. But I'm going to give you advice about how you could do this one. I'm going to write some notes on this. What it's asking is some video that shows off your, your app, its usage. We could do this in a variety of ways. Let me show you here an example. Our company has a YouTube, of course, and here are some videos and promotional videos for different apps. There's different versions of these that you could think about how you could do your, your app. For example, here's one. I won't play with sound, uh, but this has got a little bit of graphics. And this is recording simply with one camera actually using the device. Now, it's obviously a little artistic in that it zooms in and zooms out and all of that, but you've seen this on commercials on television of some app, you know, someone using an iPhone and tapping on it and it's perfectly steady there and all of that. So, whatever way, this is one way to do it. Um, there's another another version over here. This other app, this one is more about. This is going to show that it, you know, it's an app. And then it switches over to actually using the app. Once the app loads up, then it changes like this, where it's video of the app being used, not necessarily the person's hand touching everything and doing it. And there's some text, there's some action happening. This is another way to do a, a video, a promotional video for your app. So it's either showing a person holding the phone and tapping and doing, or having the app running that way. Both of them require effort, of course. The first video has me using the app and with another camera recording me using the app. And that needed editing. That needed for the video to be cut up so that it makes the most sense. So video promos. Decide on the format. Showing a person's hand using the app or Showing the function fun, functionality functionality of the app without a person. Those are a couple of ways to show off my app. They both need that setup, but both of them both will need editing. Most likely. You could turn on your camera use your app with your other hand, use the camera on another hand, and then use the app and then talk about it. That's a perfectly fine way to create a video about your app. If you make any mistakes, well, you have to start over and not make the mistake, or you do editing. So, advice on video editing software. There's lots of software out there to help you edit a video to cut out your mistakes, to add music to it, to add text. On the Mac, you have iMovie. It's free, relatively easy to use, pretty powerful. On Windows, you have Windows Movie Maker. It's free, relatively powerful. Let's you do all the things that you need to do, like cut out parts of mistakes, 
add text, add music, transition, so fades between views. Those are some very good ones that are free. But then when you want to get to more power, one that I really like, which is uh, Windows or Mac, is Adobe Premiere Elements. This one, I've seen it ranging between about $70 to $80. One-time fee. It's not like an ongoing subscription. One-time fee. Um, actually, more like $70 to $90. I bought a copy of it recently, maybe four months ago, at Fry's. And they happened to have a sale at that moment, $20 off. So it went from $90 to, to, to $70. It has more features, more power, and more complication than, than iMovie or Movie Maker. It's the middle level. Then on the highest levels for Windows or Mac, of course, we've got the full Adobe Premiere. Just Premiere, not Elements. Elements is like the junior version. Just like there's Adobe Photoshop, which is the big, big, expensive, powerful version, there's Adobe Photoshop Elements which is the junior version, which is also about $90. Traditionally, Photoshop was about $400 in the old pricing structure. And then you could get Elements for $90. Premiere is the same thing, $400, $500, $600. I don't remember the price of it on the old days. But uh, Elements is very, very, very good. Premiere, on its own, I said I don't know the price of it at the moment, but it's on a subscription part of the whole Adobe suite, which, changes, which ranges between like $19 to like $35 per month. There's student pricing and then there's intro pricing and all of these pricings. I don't have an Adobe subscription at the moment. I don't know how much this thing costs. Does anyone have an Adobe subscription? Do you remember how much it might have cost? No. What's that? Yes, exactly. One ninety six, really? I thought it was a subscription monthly. One hundred ninety six dollars one time or every year? Sounds like uscollegebuy.com. Sounds like a good price um, for one year. Then you have to you have to buy it again. Technically, if you buy student versions, it should be for student work. I'm not going to turn you in, of course. But uh, technically, then, if I buy the Creative Cloud Student Edition, I should not be using it to for real paid it's clients. It's the same edition that the previous one is. It's cloud, so you have access to the entire... Yes, package. there's no limitations, exactly. For the student, there's no limitations. I'm just saying, technically, when we buy it and install it and we sign the contract, Technically, in there it says you will be using it for student purposes. Yeah, correct, correct. So. Exactly. The point is that then we're getting up to these higher prices, um, more power. Then there's also, um, what's the other one? Um, After Effects. There's also Final Cut Pro. Those are some big ones. Again, all of these are the pricey ones. There's lots of ways to do video editing. These are the highest levels here. Medium level, low level. Not that they're bad, of course. It's just that they don't give you all of the same features. A lot of the videos that my company has made for clients have been with, with Windows Movie Maker or iMovie. It's very powerful. Um, this obviously is much more out of the scope than what we can talk about or what I would like to talk about in this class but just showing you for example this is this is a video that we that we did for a client just want to show this one off briefly make everyone hungry
that's something we did for a client, and that one was done in iMovie, I think, a few years ago. So you can create pretty impressive uh, videos and such with the expensive or the non-expensive versions of these of these things. And the reason I show that and how it relates to us is optionally you could have a video that shows off that shows off your app. Here's another one in the same sort of style. It's it's handheld. Check out this app. Notice it's at a certain angle, then it gets in a little closer, then it changes to this, it changes to that. This is not all one long continuous recording. It could be, but this one was edited. It was cut so that it shows this, it shows that, it moves this, it moves that. And there's music playing on the background, of course. So it's showing off, uh, showing off the app. That requires. So if we do the way of um, showing, showing the person using the app, the process of that basically is record the footage. edit out mistakes or edit creatively. They're not, they don't have to be mistakes, of course, but you could be recording a little bit of a view here, and then you stop recording, and then you change the view differently, and then you have to edit those things together. Obviously, we can't, can't really teach you that in this class. Uh, in my social media class, not only do I teach uh, Android programming and such, app programming, but I teach a bunch of uh, so social media and marketing classes. I teach a class on using Twitter. I teach a class on blogging, a bunch of things. I teach a class on YouTube. In that class, I teach how to use Windows Movie Maker to make some simple videos to then upload them to YouTube. So we can't get into it here because we would need the whole three-hour lecture. Uh, but you would then edit creatively, maybe optionally add text. add music. If you look at all of these videos out there and the most interesting ones, they often have a component of music. A very good video often has great visuals and great audio. So add music. That's a deeper discussion also about music because you can't and you shouldn't really simply get your favorite song and put it into the video. YouTube will probably take down your video. You don't have the rights. You don't have the copyright rights to use that song. You know, I'm going to borrow that great Justin Bieber song, and I'm going to put it in my uh, in my video. No, it's probably going to get taken down. You don't own that song. Even if you paid for the CD, you don't really own that song to use it. Here I will say, use the YouTube, um, what do they call it, music library. YouTube has a whole collection of thousands of free songs that you can use. No problem. For free. Most of these videos that you see here for our clients are using this, the YouTube Music Library. Free music for you to use to add to your video. No, no payment required, no credit required. You just use the music. Save. in a nutshell. Obviously, much more detail. Whereas the other one about showing the functionality, it's all about just about exactly the same, but the big difference is record footage on the device. You saw the example I'll pull it back in a moment. You saw the example that one of these videos that shows off the app usage doesn't show a hand holding the video, or the the device. It's a video of the of what's happening on the device. Now our Android monitor only records one screenshot. It would be great if it would also record what's happening on the screen. That's actually somewhat complicated. I'll show you the trick, of course. But what I'm saying is that with this particular after we kind of zoom in, we see that the, 
that the functionality of the device is being presented So what's happening with this one? What's happening with this one is that this is the actual device being used, explanation happening, text being added, and you know it's 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 running. This has to record the device itself, and you're never going to get very good quality if you've got a camera pointed at the device as you use it. I'll show you how this one was created. What, what this one is, is that um, what that one has is on the device itself, it's special software say it here. Run on your device the host software, which is TeamViewer. TeamViewer QS. You can get it from TeamViewer.com. Then run on the computer. Team Viewer, what do they call it? Team Viewer Client. Team Viewer. Team Viewer Desktop. Record the footage with open broadcaster software. So all of this is required to record this is one way of course but all of this is required to record directly off of the device. When all of that is done then the rest of this can be done. All of this software is free. There are paid versions but the free versions work just fine. So on this Android device I have TeamViewer Quick Support. I run it, and it says, here's your unique code to pair this device with this computer. So I would go to TeamViewer.com and download TeamViewer Desktop. It's, there's a paid and a free version. You know, the portable one works fine. You don't have to install anything. So then I'm running TeamViewer on this computer. I see the special unique code presented here and I plug it into TeamViewer on the desktop and uh, what I will see then on my computer is everything I'm doing on the device. Everything that I you know move and click and everything, everything that I'm doing on the device shows up on the screen right there uh, on Mac or Windows. And then I have to use open broadcast software which is this that I use all the time to record my lectures. I then have to set this up to record the, the screen of the device playing on my um, on my computer. Just like I can create these different sources if I wanted to, I could have this uh, these different sources uh, about what am I going to record? I'm going to record the device. All of that is this footnote right here. Once I've recorded all that footage, I put it into iMovie and then cut out my mistakes and rearrange the clips and add the music and the text, and I've got a video. Obviously then, a lot more work. We're not going to do it for this class. It's optional. It, it's not required at all here, but that might be nice to show off. Here's how my app works. Here's some interesting little video, 30 seconds 
90 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever, some video to show off my, my app to entice people to download it. That's the next level of promotion. Pictures are nice, but a video could be nicer because it has visuals, it has music, it has style, it, it, it convinces people. I would upload the file. It says if it's more than 150 megabytes, I have to go through the secure FTP uh, method to upload it. But if you get it under that size, I don't know how many minutes that is off the top of my head. But uh, if it's under that amount of space, then you just upload it directly. And when someone sees then your app on the, on your, on the device and they're thinking, well, what is this app about? Oh, there's a video. I'll click tap and it'll play the video and show off what the, what the app is about. A little commercial. All of that can be done, all of this can be done for free, right? Free iMovie, free Movie Maker, free uh, Team Viewer, free Open Broadcaster, all of that's free. Free music from the YouTube library, all that you need is the time and the effort and the practice because obviously your first attempts probably won't be as good as you want, but as you practice, you get better results. And if you'd like to see examples then, I showed here that if you go to our company page, there's examples. YouTube.com slash PMD Interactive. And it may, not, it may not be that you get a lot of views on a particular video, or it may be that it does do well. 1700 views or you might actually have a runaway smash viral hit and get 59,000 views on a video you never know this one seemed to have been really popular with people how to build an Android app in five minutes oh I shouldn't show you that because you, t you just took a three month long class didn't you now the, the joke about that is the video is five minutes long you still need to take three months to make an app but the video is five minutes long to teach you how to make an app this is a Visual Studio, so again, I'm giving away what I'm going to talk about a little later. But um, those are examples there of uh, videos. And everything that we're doing here for our Amazon app listing, all of these graphics and such, we'll, we will be reusing them if you go through the Google Play Store. Remember, we have the Google Play Store, we have the Amazon App Store, we have the iTunes Store. All of these different app stores have these assets. Uh, on the Android side, these Amazon assets are exactly the same that we would upload, that we would create and upload for Google Play. So after all of this, we would have everything set up. Maybe we have a little um, video to also show off. Any questions on these concepts about the video? Yes. Open Broadcaster. All the Team Viewer software is is separate. Yes, from the Open Broadcaster, different software. OpenBroadcaster.com, I think, or .org. Open Broadcaster software. Let's see. Open. Team Viewer is more for showing. Okay, Team Viewer does have some recording feature, but I, when I've used it, I haven't liked it. I haven't liked the results. The results are very low quality. Yes, this is Open Broadcaster. Exactly. So why do we need a team if it's not 
Well, because Open Broadcaster cannot be used to see your device's screen directly. Well, all three of these. Uh, Team Viewer QS will allow you to pair your computer to the device. Once it's paired, then you will see what's on the device on the computer. Okay. Then you use Open Broadcaster to record that. Uh, so, so yes. And it's for Windows, for Mac, and everything. OBSproject.com. And Team Viewers is TeamViewer.com. All right, so I've saved everything regarding my uh, regarding my my app I'm going to um, look one more time through it all the checks are green Amazon thinks it's all good this is the point now that if you uh, are ready to go, you're ready to go. Before you hit submit though, again one more time, uh, by this time in the course I would really like that everyone have as unique an app as possible. Yes, I give my code to you, but look at the examples of the previous semesters. Look at how people made their own icons. Look at how people went in and chose their own, their own colors and such, the style sheet. I would like that everyone have their own unique one, simply not 15 versions of the robot with a different color. We are at the precipice here where you could click submit and it's there. What I want to do is I want to end the main lecture at this point kind of early because I want you to take the time to go in and change you know, your own icon at least, so that it's different from everyone else. See how when three of them are using the same icon, that's not so cool. But then when people use a different icon, even designed a little differently, that's a little better. So, for mine, I could click Submit. I will click Submit. But I would like, as we end the, the lecture for the moment, for you to take some time to create a different icon under the images here and and upload a different small icon, a different large icon, and you probably created a pretty unique promotional image. So once those are done, then you hit submit. When we come back on Tuesday, uh, our app most likely will be approved. Uh, Amazon, let me make a note here, regarding the app stores, we have the Apple App Store or you know iTunes, iTunes, and then we have Android. Uh, well, it's officially Google Play, and then we have Amazon App Store. Let me put them in this order, actually. Apple App Store is um, not in a negative way, but we'll say restrictive. Meaning there's a rather stringent approval process. You work on your app, you develop your app, you upload it, someone or a group of people um, in Apple will look, look at your app and test it out and check it out. Is it full of viruses and spam and spyware? Rejected. So in theory, there's a gatekeeper to get into the Apple App Store. People are checking your app before your app is allowed to be shown to the public. On the other side, not restrictive. 
the Google Play for all intents and purposes there's no there's no there's no approval process if we had an account at Google Play we upload our app and in a few hours it'll be available it has to propagate through the servers all over the world as for Apple people are checking it does it follow the rules did it break this rule break that rule this and that there's so many horror stories that I read throughout the years uh, and the iPhone is about to turn 10 years old next year. So many horror stories of companies, big and small, spending so much time and money to create an amazing app, to submit it to the App Store, and they get a rejection. And in the older days, it was, it was very opaque, very minimal response about why were we rejected. They've gotten better at it, but they're still very much like a black box. What's going on behind the scenes? It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. So the opposite is Google. Anyone can make an app. Anyone can upload it. An amazing app, a mediocre app, a spam-filled app. Anyone gets in. The onus then is on us, the user, that we see a bad app, a spammy app, a virus-filled app, and we click report. Then when Google starts to get reports, then they might deal a deal with it. Apple preemptively is trying to deal with apps before they get in. There's still plenty of terrible apps. There were a lot more in the old days. All of these clones of so many apps. There's still clones. When Flappy Bird took over the world, there were so many Flappy Bird clone games out there. Flappy Fish, Splashy Fish, Flappy Bird, so many different versions of that. I remember one called Flappy Miley. That was Miley Cyrus flying around. So so many copies of that on Apple and Google. In the middle, because I wrote it in the middle, is Amazon. They're kind of halfway between the two. There is, I'm going to say semi-restrictive, basic approval process, but not that hard to pass. And if bad apps get through, we have the report button, and then Amazon deals with it. In all the apps that I've created for myself and clients, we've never had an app rejected um, on Google and Amazon. The clients that we've worked with haven't had that many, haven't gone through Apple that much because, again, $99 a year to become a developer and publish your apps on, on Apple. Whereas these, $28 one time fee zero dollars. So with a cash-strapped business, those might be better solutions. And the only times I've really had any trouble with the approval process has been when I was trying to implement Amazon Underground. That whole system about you get paid per usage of your app. That was a little tricky uh, because it had to be connected with a Google Play version of your app. You had to sell a version of your app on Google Play, and then you can create the Amazon Underground version. The Amazon Underground version is free, so you're going to be you you were you had to sell your 99 cent version one on Google, and then over on Amazon you have to give it away. But then Underground is supposed to make up for it by people's usage, and that one got rejected a couple of times simply because the connection was kind of tricky to set up. And so what I'm saying that is, I just submitted mine. We're going to take time for you to hopefully create a couple of unique assets and submit before you leave. And then you'll get an email saying, thank you for submitting. We're going to review it, blah, blah, blah. And most likely by tomorrow, you'll get the congratulations email saying, you've got an app on Amazon. Anyone can download it in the world uh, on their Android device. When we come back then on Tuesday, we'll, we'll touch base and see how that went with everyone if we had any errors and such. And then, well, we've got a brand new version. And remember, these apps are never done. We're at the, per we're at the point of MVP, minimum viable product, but there's still plenty more we could do. There's still more I want to do in this class. And so on Tuesday, when we come back, we'll start to uh, add a little bit more features for version 2. And we'll see what's the process we have to do on Amazon to release a version 2. And then we'll talk about promotion and other things, social media. Um, so, any questions about things we've talked about today in general? 
if you go if you go either on Amazon or on the web or Amazon on your device and then search the keyword my SDCE like we've been using you'll see examples of all the previous students it's not on the just plain old Amazon yes it's it's there for anyone you don't have to be a developer anyone can get this app just plain Amazon yes check that you've got green check marks on all of them I thought I saw that your binary one was not green yet check that you have green check marks on all your tabs I thought I saw it on yours on binary you didn't have one yet so click on that click edit and then we will check in a moment what's going on with yours but it's not fully you haven't checked you haven't gotten green on all of them yet we'll do that in a moment mine gave me a brand new tab now that I submitted successfully submitted but it's not available yet it's in the submission process it's estimated to go live by 8 30 p.m. August 12th that'll be tomorrow oftentimes when we do this it's done pretty fast I have cancel lab submission usually you don't need to do that so that's it for the moment we'll have some we'll have lab time the rest of the day I hope you take the time to make your app more unique than mine and um, when that's all done, submit it, and we'll continue on Tuesday.